Welcome to Toffee TV. It is the player ratings. Everton won Burnley nil. Oh, how long we have waited to utter those words. It's been so long since Everton won a Premier League game that... I don't know. I'm trying to think of something to compare it with, but... I feel about four years older. And not certainly not any wiser. But here we are. We have got a win. Um, we have bookended the two Burnley games. We have done the double over someone, which is... I don't know what that says about Burnley, but... Um, and we've got the three points. And, yeah, massive, massive three points today, considering Forrest won in the week. And, obviously, still yet to play this weekend. And, obviously, Luton ended up winning as well, which wasn't, which wasn't great. Um, at one point, I think we were above. We were above. Uh, we'd gone above that. Um, Brentford as well, uh, but obviously they, they and oh, we have gone above Brentford. There you go. We have. We're still up. We've gone above Brentford. Didn't even realise that we would have gone above Brentford, um, by a point. But we have gone above Brentford, so that's good. And we're a point closer to Crystal Palace. That's good. Um, of course, you know. This could all change very much next week. We could definitely um, definitely be on a couple of less points. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, the game, instantly forgettable. Dreadful first half once again. Just just in general. General football was just... Wasn't great. Um, improved a little bit second half because we were 1-0 up and... Then they got a man sent off, and then, yeah, um, I said, yeah, I, I don't. We just allow teams to 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 boss games. We did the same against Brighton when they went down to one nil, and that cost us. Didn't cost us against Burnley because Burnley are a very very poor side in terms of scoring goals and making chances. They're nice on the eye, but but um, they're not. They're not really any cop are let's be honest. But the football's a lot better to watch than, than ours are. Yeah, I mean I can't dress it up. I can't dress up today's performance. It was it wasn't great. Don't think we played poorly, we're just not a good side. Do you know what I mean? That that's the top and bottom of it, isn't it? You 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 go the game expecting Everton to do certain things because they're at home. It was a lovely day, the atmosphere around the get around the ground was one of I think a lot of people were just like you know, we're back at Goodison. It's nice to be back at Goodison. It felt it's been a it's been like half a pre season since we've been back and, and oddly the team a lot of the players did have a pre season in that time. But you know we got over the line and that's all that matters. Sometimes that's all that matters and we have to do that at least at least two more times at Goodison Park against Forest and against Brentford. We have to do that. And obviously the goal was a bit for in its nature, but showed that we, that what being on the front foot and what confidence can do. I thought, you know, we'll come up, we'll talk more about the individuals obviously in a moment. But, um, but we've got the win, we've got the win, and it wasn't great. And we can't dress it up as being great. It was what it was. So we will take, we will take that today. We will take it. Um, play, the manager again was, in terms of players, you know. No Onana, no 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 uh, Adisagana gay. That's not great taking you taking um taking a couple of players out the out the team that started the other day. Onana said he felt didn't feel good after saying and Adisagana gay had a baby last night. Congratulations to him. Um But that it is what it is. So we got the job done and the players worked hard if if they weren't uh, spectacular, which obviously they weren't, but um, let's get into the playing ratings. Jordan Pickford didn't really have anything to do, made one save, um, which was a very low low chance, 0.12 according to Sofa Score, where I get all my stats, and I'd love you all to download it, please, the link is in the description, it really does help the channel out, um, but he had a quiet, he had a quiet day, um, some of his kicking wasn't Great. Some of it wasn't bad. 
needs to calm down, say the same things every single week about Jordan Pickford. But today, he um, had very, very little to do, to be honest. He just had to stay switched on. Um, so I would give him a 6.8 for today. Seamus Coleman. Um, a couple of moments just being, you know, showing maybe, showing his age a little bit. Um, I thought one header at the end where he didn't have to edit it out for the corner, literally the last kick, last corner of the game. I was just praying it didn't cost us. I really did. I was just praying it didn't cost us. It doesn't help that that he, him and Young are on the same side. It does remove a lot of the energy from that side of the pitch. Um, didn't really get going too much for. We did a little bit in the first half and didn't actually did one like really good. This little thing where he gets round the other side of the defender, but his cross wasn't great. Two clearances, one block shot. Uh, ground duels only won one out of three. None of the aerial duels won. Um, that's his heat map from today. Um, as you can see, not much in the opposition half. So, Seamus Coleman, I would give a 6.3 for today's performance. On the other side, Tali Michalenko, um, again, defensively sound, no issues at all. Got a lot of that left-hand side today because McNeil was playing more tucked in a lot of the time. Um, a lot of the time, Michalenko had loads of space on that side. Um, and as you can see from his heat map, how far forward he got, and you can see, I mean, it's interesting the, the four blobs there in different parts of the pitch, but he did get forward, and the space maybe was made by by Michael and, uh, by Dwight McDaniel, as I said, coming inside. They were tricky on their right hand side, actually. Uh, one of their players absolutely skinned McNeil, so it wasn't wasn't an easy. Wasn't an easy sort of day for him, but five tackles, ground duels, won seven out of out of eight. Um, no aerial duels, but f seven out of eight again, brilliant from defensively from Vitaly Michalenko. Um, is really a good defender. We've, he's pro. He's turned himself into a really good defender, um, and done the job brilliantly today. I would give him a seven point three for today. Uh, James Tarkowski. Um, Again, quite solid. Had a little bit of a had a little bit of a erratic moment um, in. There was like a little spell. I think it was about twenty minutes in, where he was a little bit erratic. Um, but there was just this, this little spell. But 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 once we got once he and that got through. But he and us got through that. I think, again, quite consistent. Um, ground duels only didn't win any out of four, though, which is unusual for him. Did win five out of five aerial duels, though. Um, 49 touches. Yeah. Did all right. Did all right. Not brilliant, but did all right. I would give him a 6.9 for today. Didn't have to do loads. But did what he had to do, basically. Next to him, uh, Jared Brantwaite. Excellent again, I think. Um, I think that uh, Coma came out. The uh, Coma company came out after. I was in a coma watching that game. Company came out after the game and said how good he was. I don't know. Um, I don't know if he's trying to. Scout him for for Manchester City, but he said how good he was. Won five out of only two out of five ground, just two out of three errors. Just again, he made nearly one costly error in the first half, where he done what he did against Newcastle, where he he got caught and he didn't know whether to jump in, and he sort of um, he jumped in and and. Again, just give the lads a bit too much space. But that, to be honest, was the only mistake. And he is learning. He learns every single game. He's getting better every single game. Tuck did one in the first half where he took the ball off one of their players brilliantly and then had a shot and fair play to him. Well, on, a day, on another day, they fly in and we've seen that. You know, he has threw one in. Um, 
against Brighton. But 38 touches, 79 percent pass accuracy. Again, he's, he's just so calm. He's just so calm. He will make mistakes. He's a young player. He will make mistakes. There's his heat map from today. Um, he will make mistakes now and again. And he's just he's just so calm and composed, and and that can be the di- that's the difference. I think I think when teams are looking for centre backs, that's the first thing they look at. Do they panic under pressure? And we, we you know we had John Stones here, and we obviously. So John Stones play every single week and he had the same elements about him of just so calm when everybody else might be losing their heads a little bit. He's not. And even when Tarky, as I said before, gets in a bit of a spin sometimes, I don't think Brantwaite does. I don't think he gets flustered at all. And that tells me that he's destined for the very top. Um, so good all-round game from him today. I would give him a 7.6 for today's performance. Into midfield, obviously, they made changes because they had to. Um, they, did, they did bring Andre Gomez in. Uh, James Garner did come back into the side. Uh, James Garner actually only had 32 touches, which is quite low for a player playing in that position. Um, ground duels won 5 out of 8. That was really good. Won 1 out of 1 aerial duel. Uh, very busy, very hard-working. Again, probably lacks... Probably lacks that a killer killer ball. Uh, although he did have one key pass in the game, seventy one percent possession. Yeah, not not listen, nothing to write home about. But I do think his work ethic is something to talk about. I think he does um, he does love a tackle. As four tackles today, um, so without being spectacular. Worked hard. That's all I can say, really. Um, so James Garner, I'll just show you his, just show you this heat map there. So not much, only a little bit of red. And we did give, we did give up. The makeup of that midfield wasn't great today, and we did give up a lot of uh, possession to them. So um, I would give James Garner a six point seven for today's performance. Next to him, uh, Andre Gomez, who. I think he did. I think he did okay. Wasn't amazing. I thought he did okay. I thought he 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 likes taking responsibility. Keep my point. So six. He had sixty-two touches. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong one. Sixty-two touches. Um, four out of eleven ground duels. Uh, no aerial duels. One out of two tackles. Three interceptions. Two. 90% pass accuracy after 62 touches. So he did have a lot of the ball, a lot more of the ball today than James Garner. He was taking responsibility. Um, as I said, was he amazing? No, but he came in and he did a job. He did a job for us. To, so can't really... Because he, he's, he, he's been, you know, in the squad for the second half of the season and he'd be out of the squad and then he flits in and out. So... Uh, Gomez, I would give a, I would give a seven for today for today's performance. Um, on the right hand side, Ashley Young splits opinion. Doesn't he play eighty three minutes? That's probably about twenty five minutes more than a lot of people would want him to play. I had thirty five touches. Um, won four out of his five ground duels. Won one of his aerial duels. Should he really be playing right wing when we're playing at home? No, he shouldn't. He shouldn't. But it sort of tells you everything you need to know about Sean Dyche and the way he looks at games. You know, Sean. I think he Sean Dyche said after the game that he was he'd he'd set up an ugly win, and basically that's what we did. And you can see that with with the way. Again, Ashley Young on the right, Dwight McNeil's on the left, but he's playing more centrally. His, his, his heat map does show all the red splodges on the right-hand side, and he did stick on the right-hand side, to be fair to him. But is, do you really want a player of his age playing in front of Seamus Coleman in a home game where you must win? The answer to that is no. But the only other problem is that... Harrison's hasn't been great, and we've all been saying Harrison's been poor. We haven't got any other players. We haven't even got Dobbin. So it becomes 
it must become it's 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 one of those, isn't it? Where the manager must will actually say, "Well, what do you want me to do?" People have said Harrison's not playing well, and then the only other right winger I've got is Ashley Young. He probably could have brought him on earlier, but he likes his work rate, and he and he's got game intelligence. Ashley Young, whether the, whether you like him or not, has got game intelligence. He has got game intelligence. So, um, was he terrible? No. Could we do better? Arg- that's, a, that's 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 argu- arguably at the moment. I'm not. I'm not even that sure. Um, so it, it it's it's the situation we're in, isn't it? It really is the situation with the players we've got. Um, we're 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 really struggling with the players we've got. So, um, I would give him. I would give Ashley Younger a. a a 6.7 for today's performance. On the other side, Dwight McNeil. Um, creatively, not loads there. 50 touches, 79% pass accuracy, one key pass, five crosses, none of them, none of them were accurate. Um, no shots on target, one shot off target. Ground duels won six out of 12. So he does put himself in for a lot of a lot of um ground duels. Um he He works hard. That's what that's what it's about with Dwight McNeil and I think we saw that thing to we saw a press to press halfway through the game or about seventy minutes. Can't remember when it was. When he basically just chased after the whole of Burnley's front uh, back three with the ball, and play fans, fans seem to like that. I, 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 I don't necessarily get drawn into that too much at times because I think it's about your whole performance. I think if you're looking at a performance and thinking, "Well, he chased after three players," I think you have to look a little bit deeper than that. Um, he was coming. He was coming inside a lot. Uh, at times, he was coming inside, on obviously on purpose, and letting Michalenko have the whole... Other. So it was a tactical ploy. He wasn't stuck out inside all the time, and it did change Jordan the game, but he, he, he'll he work hard for you. Creatively, though, there's... He had one shot in the first half, which got, just, um, got blocked on the edge of the box. But he is nowhere near... The level he was last season, like no, no way nearly. Um, just that's to show you this heat map from today. So a couple of blobs on the left hand side and a little bit elsewhere, but he isn't nowhere near the player he was last season. He's he hasn't got anywhere near it to be honest. Um, But that's the way it is. That is the way it is. Um, and we need that create. We need that elements of well creativity, certainly from scoring goals and and putting crosses in for for like the likes of Dominic Carvalhoon. But the way we play just doesn't seem to get us get us into those positions. So um, Dwight McNeil, I'd give a six point five for today. I'd the like the core, eh? um Forty four touches, fifty two percent. Accuracy, seven out of eleven ground duels, which is quite good for him. That four out of four aerial duels, which again is quite good for, for him because normally those are quite low. Um, dribble attempts, three out of four, which isn't bad. Well, it's good for him. Um, shots off target, two, no shots on target, um, which is something that we've been missing. Again, he's 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 one who just hasn't been on it recently. He was a little bit better today, I'd say. He was a little bit better, not amazingly better, but but a little bit better. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I think he just has to have more of an effect. I think because we played on the counter attack and he carried us forward, I think that that did help us. Uh, it certainly helped him, but um, still miles away from from the form he was in when he was really impacting the game. So I would give him a. 6.7 for today's performance. Um, again, just show you this heat map there. So a lot on a lot over on that on that right hand side. Probably getting the the, the deeper through balls to him. Um, and finally, Dominic Carvalhoon 
well, finally from the first 11. The goal scorer for today, and I thought he had his best game in a very, very long time today. I thought he was, I thought he was excellent. Only 28 touches, three shots on target, and obviously a goal. Um, dribble attempts, three, two successful, so that's good for him. Uh, won seven of his 10 ground duels, won five out of his 11 aerial duels, that's not bad, nearly 50% there. And I just thought he was an all-round more of a menace today. I think there was a, you could see the confidence from him. Yes, was the goal fortuitous, yes, but you've got to be in the right place at the right time, and he was. You know, to to block the, the, the keeper from coming out. Um, he had a really good one in the second half that he made himself, where the keeper made a good save. So to give the keeper, done really good work to get into the box, and then, so to give the keeper the eyes, and the keeper saved it with his legs. That would have wrapped the game up at 2-0. Um, and I had one late on where he sort of pushed himself too far wide. But I thought in general is all right. And another one from the from our, from our right-hand side, he come in on the left, and put it just over. But I think his all-round game was was really good today. And he looked like, again, conf- we talk about confidence. Confidence is mat- massive with, I think, centre-forwards. Like Dominic Carvel, who aren't quite... Who aren't at the high end, let's just say that. And I think he is someone that once he gets into a... Once he gets into a run, he does score goals in, in runs. Um, and I think he's always had that during his career. And whether people... People can slag him off or people can say he's amazing. Um, he fought, he, he, Well, he doesn't fall somewhere in the middle because he's not, he's not rubbish by any means. I think the difference is he once he gets on the ball, certainly in running positions, he's in a lot... I mean, I've had, you know, I'm not going to... You know, people talk about him and Beto. The difference is when he gets on the ball, he looks like he's in control of it. When Beto gets on the ball, I don't think he, he ever looks like he's in control of it. All in control of the situation. I think Dom tries to manufacture situations themselves, himself with a, with a trick or whatever. Um, and that today was Dominic Carmeloon back to his a player with confidence. On another day, he gets a couple of goals. Um, so hopefully now he can hit a bit of a, hit a bit of form. He's helped us pick up four points in the last in the last in the last week. Um, and we we hope that that's the that's the turning point, and it's at the right time as well for him. So I thought Dom, I thought probably one of Dom's best all round performances of the season. Um, so I didn't understand taking him off either. I thought that was a little bit strange. I thought, as I said, there's his heat map. There you can just see his heat map. I thought. Um, I just think <laughs> when you one nil up. And you are allowing the opposition to have a lot of the ball. You you want to hold the ball up. And I think Dom does that. And I don't think Beto does that. I, I wouldn't have took I wouldn't have took Dom off today. I just wouldn't. I don't think he looked tired or anything either. So I, I wouldn't have took him off today. I thought it was a very, very strange one. Um so I would give Dom Dom an eight for today. Obviously getting that goal. Um really does help and gives us uh Gave us the win. So, um, just on to the subs. Um, Jack Harrison and Beto. Harrison came on. He had seven touches of the ball. 100% pass accuracy. Um, no ground duels. No aerial duels. Yeah, he did all right with his three touches. So, I'll give him a 6.5. I think he should have been on a little bit earlier. If... if uh, Truth be known, he should have been on a little bit earlier. Um, but the manager, the manager will keep on managing, won't he? Dice will keep on dicing. Um, Beto came on with 13 minutes to go, as I said. I wasn't sure about that. Um, eight touches. Listen, works hard. I thought in the game he should have had a penalty, but... It was outside the box, apparently. The things you see when you're in the game compared to people who are not up or, or, or the, in the Gladys Street. Um, he makes some intelligent runs and then when he gets there, doesn't know what to do. So there was... The one where he went down, like, why... I, I'll need to see it again, but... 
for me, it was a foul because I don't understand why you would go down in that. Eight. It really was. He was clean through on goal. There was another one on the edge of the box where he won the ball and then he slid in. And I don't understand why he slid in because he'd actually he was going to win the ball regardless. And some of his some of his decision making is is um, interesting to say the least. Interesting. And I think when you watch Don play like he did today, you can uh, you can see the difference between the two players. Dom is miles ahead of him as a footballer. Um, said this quite a lot. Dom is miles ahead because Dom can actually get the ball under a control and get the get control of a situation. Beto doesn't do that, and there is a lot of rough edges to get rid of. But you know what? His natural instincts on the pitch aren't bad. His runs aren't bad, but some of his some of his like just some of his like when he when he's played through some of his decision making how to get the ball is just baffling. And when when he gets on the ball. You have no idea where he's actually going to go, like where his first touch is going to take him. There's so much to work on there, um, and that's why Dom plays, and that's why Dom will play at Chelsea and and probably start the other home games. But you know that's that is the way it is. So uh, Beto, I would give a six point five, um, but he is he is yeah. It is crazy to watch sometimes. So, so there you go. I mean, we got the win. We got three points. We should have had a. We should have had a penalty, another penalty, but we didn't get it. And we just have to get through now and hope that we can um, we can get the wins. That's secure. We're gonna probably lose more points next week, I imagine, and that's gonna drag us back in, back into the mix. Um, But we have once it's done, it's done, isn't it? Once it's done, it's over, and we know what we have to face then. And um, once we, once it's that's it, it'll be done then, and it, hopefully it's low. And then we know where we are in terms of the rest of the season, and it's the home games. It's Forest and Brentford and Luton away. They're the games we can't lose to Forest, and we can't lose to 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 Luton. We have to. Not lose those teams and and you know, hopefully beat them really. So, um, there you go. That's been my player ratings. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and uh, make sure you check out Baz's videos. Don't forget to check out my match preview if you. Uh, sorry, my instant match reaction. Glad to see reaction even if you haven't already for lots of bits around the ground and stuff. And there you go. Thanks for watching. See you later.